Well, hi everyone. Let's do this review here. Um, we have the first thing we have is a piecewise function, and you can see everything defined here. If I need to find f of negative seven, I look over here, and this is the that's the function. This is the piece I'll use for that. Um, f of negative seven will equal negative seven minus one which is negative 8. If I want to use f of 1, that falls between the negative 1 and 3, so I'll use this one. I'll go 3 times 1 minus 5. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. And f of 3. I don't use this one. I only use this if the number here is bigger than 3. So I'm going to use the second one again. And go 3 times 3 minus 5, 9 minus 5 is 4. Now, let's graph this. Um, I do want, I'm going to use the x and the x minus 1, but I'm going to use negative 1, and I'm going to use a solid dot there at negative 1, whatever this point turns out to be. Negative 2, negative 3, just get the points here. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. So we kind of have the dividing lines uh, less than or equal to negative 1. So this is kind of the fences for the pieces. So we got a piece here from negative 1 to 1, 2, 3. We have a piece here. And then we do this from this point on. We use that function. So negative 1, negative 2 is right here. Negative 2, negative 3, negative 3, negative 4. All right. That's how that part goes. Now this middle part. I am still going to use negative 1, but I'm going to use an open circle wherever this appears, and the 3x minus 5, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. This is negative 5. This is negative 2. This is 1. 9 minus 5 is 4. I already had that. We knew what f of 3 was. Now I'm going to use a solid one here because that is included. Solid. Make it solid. All right. Negative 1, negative 8, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Negative 1, negative Open circle there. Not a, the, the actual value function at negative 1 is this. But then when we go above negative 1, we pick up here. 0, negative 5, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, negative 2, 2, 1, and 3, 1, 2, 3, 4 is here. Okay. So, got that middle part done, and now the x and the x squared minus 3x minus 1. I'll do 3 and with an open circle. 4, 5. squared minus 3 times 3 minus 1. 9 minus 9 is 0. That's negative 1. 4 squared minus 3 times 4 minus 1. 16 minus 12 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. 5 squared minus 3 times 5 minus 1. 25 minus 15 is 10 minus 1 is 9. All right, 3 
negative 1. I need to see those open circles. Those need to be part of your piecewise function graph. 4, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 5, 9, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is here. It's not a straight line, it's kind of curving up. It's that part of the parabola. We don't see the vertex because that's not part of it. All right, so we got it graphed. The domain, we are defined at negative 1. We are also defined at 3. So we can go straight across. The domain is all real numbers. Range, we got negative infinity to here. This kind of picks up, and then this will pick up where that left off. The range is also negative infinity to infinity. Just be ready um, in case there's gaps in either the domain and the range. Be ready to see that on the test if that were to occur. Now number three, I'm going to graph. Determine the open intervals for which this function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. So I just want to look at the graph there. Turn on clear. Quit. Clear. Y equals. Okay. And do get familiar with the calculator. It's math, num, ABS. There's the absolute value. It may just stay ABS with parentheses, um, or it'll, the bars will come up. X minus 3, absolute value of X minus 3, times, and then math, num, absolute value, X plus 2, X plus 2. Okay, let's graph that. All right. That's pretty clear. Now, increasing. I need to find these values. I have a feeling this is negative 2 and this is positive 3. And also, based on that, I, those are going to give us 0. So I feel good about the negative 2 and the positive 3. Um, we could still use the, the real point I want to figure out here. I'm just going to kind of... Okay, and this is this is six. Okay, when x is zero, you got absolute value of negative three times the absolute value of two. So I know that, but I but I can see we're going up above that somewhere, and I want to figure out what that peak is. So I'm going to use the the um, max function on the calculator, which is second calc number four maximum left bound I I am left of it right now so I'll hit enter and then I'll curse over here so to speak you know what I'm talking about I'm not gonna actually curse but and then to the right of it that max looks like 0 0.5 and 6.25 right here and that's important because that's when it stops increasing and starts decreasing. So this is 0 0.5, 6.25. All right, now I have the information I think I need. So this is decreasing left of negative 2 at 0.5. We got something changing, and at 3. So decreasing. Let's look at decreasing first. I'm going to go negative infinity to 2. And it's the open interval, so you don't need to worry about this. Um, I'm increasing here, but then I start decreasing again. But that happens, and these are on x. Just make sure you're doing that. 0 0.5 to 3. Those are the decreasing intervals. Increasing. Um, negative 2 to 0 
and three the rest of the way. All right, so that's that. Now, um, there's no constant. It, I would be looking for a horizontal part of the line if there was a constant part of the function. All right, we're going to clear this graph and put in x to the third. minus 3x squared minus x plus 1. And I'm going to graph that. i got a typical graph on, I think. All right. So I think I'll answer this here first with these points before I really start drawing it. And relative max, I got a relative max right here. It's not the absolute max because it goes to infinity, but right here, this point is higher than everything around it. So that's a relative max. So I'm going to use the max function again, second calc for, I want to go left of it, enter. I want to go right of that peak, enter, guess, enter. All right. It's not a pretty answer. I'm going to go three decimal places. Negative point one five five. This is an approximate. And one point zero seven nine. I'll go with that for my max. Now I'm going to go second calc and go min. I need to be left of it. I'm there. I need to be right of it. Hit enter. I'm there. Guess. Hit enter. And I'm looking at 2.155 and negative 5.079. Notice how the decimals are kind of the same there. Um, it's just interesting. I'm going to use the zeros function here. So second calc number two. I want to figure out what those zeros are. Where is those are the x-intercepts. I'm going to go here first. I need to be left of it, so that means it's going to be below here. All right, hit enter. I need to be right of it, which is also above, so I'll hit enter. And I see a, a zero at negative 0.675. These are all approximate. Let's do it again for that second one. I see three of them. I see a second one here and a third one here. So I'm going to left, there, that's good. Right, that's good. Hit enter. So just be familiar. Get familiar with your calculator. 0 0.461. And then there's one more. Second calc. Um, zero. You want a zero. All right, I am left of it. Enter. Now I am right of it. Enter. 3.214. Okay. All right. I want to just get all these points on here. Um, the y-intercept is 1. If you put zeros in for the x, the y-intercept is 1. So I know that's a point on the graph. Um, relative max is real close. Negative is just like right near there. Um, I got a min at 2 point, a little bit past 2 and a little below negative 5. 3, 4, 5, what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A little bit below that, right around there. Um, let's plug our zeros in. Negative 0.675, I'll put right around there. 0.461, I'll put right around there. 1, 2, 3, 0 0.2, I'll put right around there. Um, so it comes up, comes down, comes back down, and works its way back up again. So it's pretty accurate because we're hitting the zeros in a decent place and we're hitting the maxes and mans. That would be what I would be considering accurate. And then 
just don't be careful not to just kind of veer off like this or veer off way over there or something um, when you're drawing that. Now intervals for which f of x is greater than zero. Right here, f of x is greater than zero, and that goes from this zero to that zero. And that is, and it's greater than or equal to zero, so I'm going to put these brackets in. Um, that's from negative 0 0.675 to 0 0.461. And then it's bigger than zero after that. All these values of y after that are bigger than zero, and that's from 3.214, and then forever after that. All right. Now, determine whether the functions are even, odd, or neither, and justify your response either algebraically or graphically. I'm going to go algebraically first and then maybe go graphically with one or two of them just to just take a look at it. Um, so I am going to take the x's and replace them with negative x's. And that is looking like negative x to the third is negative x to the third negative 5 times negative x is positive 5x. And if I write this as negative, if I pull the negative out here, I'd be x cubed minus 5x. That is the opposite of this. That is the definition when, I should write this. Wait, I got a little ahead of myself. That's equal to negative f of x. That is the definition of an odd function. Okay, that's how we show it algebraically. And I'm going to show this one algebraically. G of negative x, that's negative x and then squared minus 4. Okay, and that equals negative times negative is positive. x squared minus 4, which is equal to g of x. g of x is equal to x squared minus 4. That is, by definition, an even function. All right, h of negative x is equal to the cube root of negative x minus 4. Now h of negative x, I'm going to do something here, just playing around with it a little bit. Negative you agree that that is the case? And this is like the cube root of negative 1 times cube root of x plus 4. So that is negative cube root of x plus 4. And that's not the opposite of that because it's different in the inside the radical. So this one's neither. Okay, we'll quickly graph these. Um, and y equals, oops, I got something here, I'm going to delete the, this part, oh, jeez, I'm deleting the wrong thing, okay, now i got to do it over, so x to the third, minus 5x oh, to the third okay I gotta hit that right arrow to get it out of the exponent minus 5x graph okay and this one was odd and if you'll notice it does um, it is the other thing you can look at is the graph is symmetric over the origin like this point will correspond to this point. This point corresponds to that point, and so on. 
So this is, that's how you would show it graphically. All right. So in this one, you would see it's probably going to go like this. It's symmetric over the y-axis. And this one, you can see, would be symmetric over neither. I'll let you do that on your own. All right. So use the greatest integer function to answer 6 and 7. All right. So I need to take 2.4 minus 1 and then add 1. Um, this is the greatest integer function of 1.4 plus 1, and this is 1. So it's 1 plus 1, which is 2. Okay, 1 and 7 eighths minus 1 is 7 eighths. And we're going to add 1. For 7 eighths, that's 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. Okay, this one, 0.75 minus 1 is negative 0.25 and then plus 1. Now this is negative 1 plus 1 which is 0 okay um, here's 0 here's negative 1 point negative point two five is here and you go you always go left to the left the nearest integer left of your value if you're looking at a number line um, if it's on let me finish this first plus 1 so this is negative 3 3 plus 1, which is, whoops, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. GIF of 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. Now, if I'm going to graph this, first of all, I'm going to think about, I'm going to just kind of lightly do the parent function. Oh, and I'm not using the calculator right now, if you'll notice. So you need to kind of be ready for a non-calculator portion on this test. Now, I am going to shift right one unit and up one unit. So I'm going to shift this right and up which is pretty interesting. So I take this one, I move it right, and then I move it up. It's the same thing. I'm done. I'm done with this graph. Okay, and I use, just use the translation to do that. All right, and then this back page. Equation for each graph. The f of x equals x cubed. That is a cubic. Now, cubics usually rise. This one's fault cube. So, and I went, I'm going shifting it left one and down two. I'm going to put a negative here. I'm going to go left one. That would be x plus one cubed and then down two minus two. That's that one. Um, and I don't think there's a stretch involved here. But what I could do is take that. And let's go x plus, let's go a times x plus 1 cubed minus 2, because I know that translation. And if I use this point here, if I use that, um, well, let me use this point. Let me use this y-intercept of 0, negative 1. Hello? She's, she's not in right now. You want me to keep talking? All right, so... Um, draw that divider here. Here's what you do if you're not sure 
you know, if this is not negative one, I'm going to find out here in a minute if it is, if it's stretched or not. I don't think it is. Um, I'm using the point zero, negative one. So zero plus one cubed minus two and negative one equals that's one cubed so that's a minus two so I'll add two to both sides and look at here I get a is one so we're good here there's no stretch on that is there a stretch here maybe let's go this is f of x equals x squared is the parent function I'm gonna go I'm going to change that to g of x. When I do the transform, I'm just going to make a habit of just changing that to g of x. Um, I'm going to go a, go over 1, down 3. I'm going left 1, so x plus 1 squared, and then down 3, minus 3. And... Um, let me find a point here. I'm going to use this y-intercept of 0, negative 1. I did that on the last one, too. So here's 0. No, here's negative 1, the y-coordinate. a times x plus 1 squared, oops, 0 plus 1 squared, minus 3. So negative 1 equals... 1 squared times a is a minus 3. I'm going to add 3. All right, now I know that a is 2. So I'm going to go g of x equals 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 3. Figured out the stretch. So it's a stretch factor of 2 there. Okay, I do, this is the square root function. It's not a negative. I'm thinking negative because I think we have flipped it. Okay. The square root function goes like this. Kind of. Negative square root of x goes like this. Which is what this one is doing. Kind of the shape of that one. So. And. There is, there is no, um, when I see zero, zero, or when I see a slope or here of one or negative one, I'm thinking there's no, for the first point, I'm thinking there's no, um, A is one here, or A is negative one here, actually. So I'm going to go negative square root of X. Okay, this is left 2, so go x plus 2, and then down 1, and then minus 1 is outside of there. Okay, if you wanted to check, check the point, um, if you want to check to make sure this is negative 1 and not negative half or something like that, I would look at this point here, negative 1, negative 2. Just find a point, an obvious point on the, the thing. Um, g of x equals a times square root of, we do know the shift, x plus 2 and then minus 1. And what point am I using? Negative 1 for x. And for y, I'm using um, negative 2. So negative 2 equals a times the square root of 1 minus 1. Negative 2 equals A minus 1. I'll add 1. Negative 1 equals A. So we're good there. We're good. That didn't have. All right. There we go, guys.